So I'd like to give you a quick tour of where things are located in the course because I want to make sure everyone knows exactly what's expected of them and I don't want this new learning management system uh, to get in the way of you completing your expectation, completely fulfilling the expectations of you in the class to get the grade that you want. So as you can see, this is our home screen. Um, as things and activity goes on in the course, you will be getting feedback over here with links to it that will jump you into those assignments where you can receive that feedback. Um, all of our tools that are currently available are found right here, so you can have quick access to the syllabus, announcements that I've made, access to your grades, see who's in the course, and then here's some forms that you may need as well. I've organized the course so that everything that you'll need is in these learning modules here in the middle of our home screen here. So let me go ahead and scroll down so you can see everything from week one. So here within this welcome module is like it says here in this heading, you know, there's a set of videos that are created by the Online Learning Center Student Services team that can help you learn how to do the platform even more fully than this video here that I have provided for you. Um, you'll also find an introduction for myself in the course overview. The course overview is a key piece because it's going to describe all of the major assignments in the course up front so that you can plan ahead and know what's expected in them. And then there's also a list of external resources which students find very helpful, which is some places where I've suggested for where you can continue your learning outside of the course. And then here in this website design certificate, uh, area here. This is created by the Math and Computer Science Department that can help you uh, know what courses should come after this course. In this general questions area, this is a great spot for you to publicly ask your questions to the class, similar to how you would in a face-to-face -face class. So you can always come in here, field your question to the class, and then I would come here and answer it. If you send me a question via email that I feel that it's public, I'm actually going to go ahead and post it here in the general questions area just so everybody in the class can learn from my response. The general questions area is also a great spot for you to answer each other's questions as well because sometimes it might take me some time to get into the course to answer a question. If you have an answer for somebody else in the class, feel free to go ahead and answer it. Here in the textbook e-reserves area, this is where you will find the reading materials for the first two weeks. I also have provided some of the appendixes and things for our textbook that were not part of the edition that you guys bought, but they're free from the textbook publisher's website, so I've included them in there. And then everything that you need for week one is found here within this week one learning module. This is where we're going to find access to our assignments, our discussion questions, and all the content that I would be providing you as if this was a face-to-face -face course. Down here at the bottom I have quick access to the university's website, to our George Herbert Walker School of Business and Technology website, our specific website for math and, math and computer science, and then links to the website design and development certificates. Let's go ahead and take a look at the week one learning module. When we go into the learning modules, you can always navigate between them using these previous links or the next links over here on the right. I would encourage you, if for some reason you're not seeing these links, it's an indicator that perhaps your browser needs to be updated. We all need to make sure that we are in the most updated versions of Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, Chrome, or what have you. If you ever log into the course and you see like an orange bar at the top of the screen that says you're in an unsupported browser, that basically means that you're in an unsupported browser. So keep that in mind. But one of the common things we've seen as I work for the Online Learning Center and we support this platform is that sometimes people will not see these next and previous buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the next button. Uh, the very first page in all of our learning modules, as you just saw a second ago, was just a list of some things that you may need to do that's provided by the academic administration, but then the second page is an overview page. This is similar to what, like I would say, maybe the first, you know, five minutes of class or so. And then down here at the bottom, I have a list of objectives. Let's go ahead and continue on. The whole middle of the course is lecture material that I would provide for you. If you were taking this with me in a face-to-face -face class, this would be a PowerPoint that I would be talking through. But here I have notes and images provided for us all right here uh, within the course. I'm going to be linking us to uh, various resources outside of the course that I would suggest to continue your learning. Um, these ones that I've listed for you from lynda.com uh, we're thankful that well, there was a period of time when the university lost access to Linda.com, but we now have it back. I would suggest uh, using this link right here to go in and set up an account so that you can have access to these resources. 
but I list the ones, the videos that I would like you guys to watch uh, here. But what I'm asking you to watch this first week is basically the first, at least the first section of the exploring web design um, in this resource here, uh, web design fundamentals, uh, specifically these videos listed right here. Um, these are really going to help set up your learning in the course. Some of you come, might come to this course with a greater background than some, so maybe these videos aren't as useful to you. But I would say at least give them, you know, five, five, ten minutes of your time, just to kind of see what's there and uh, feel if you need to watch them or not. But again, I would, I would like you to watch all of these videos, and some of this material is going to be covered in the quiz that's found in week two. So keep that in mind. The next resources that I provided for you are from. Uh, some graphic designers, uh, they created a series of free resources online called Don't Fear the Internet. So you can click on these videos here and it would take you to their website to watch those videos. Uh, these videos are geared more for someone who is transitioning from a uh, graphic design background into doing a little bit of web design. And I've found that probably 90% of the students that actually take this class have that uh, as as their actual background is they're they're from graphic design their graphic design background and maybe they're wanting to know how to make a website to show their work or maybe they're just wanting to expand their portfolio so again i hope you guys enjoy those resources and each week i am also going to be sharing with you resources from websites like code academy and code school and every week i'm also going to be giving you well not this week but starting in week two i'm going to be giving you also suggested resources to continue learning from html dog which is a great website that will give you just the bare bones how to do something in code and I think you'll find it really helpful. As I click next, each week you will see an opportunity for extra credit and on these in the lecture I will introduce the extra credit opportunity for you and give you a snippet of what the extra credit can uh, shows. But basically you can click read more, uh, read the blog, see if it's something that you would like to do the extra credit for. What the extra credit basically is, um, you can click on the course overview link to give you more information about it. But basically you need to summarize what the blog says, kind of like an executive summary for the class. So give us some key points and then in that, in that thing that you post at the very end of it, list for us um, some sort of a question that can then engage the class and myself in discussion about what that blog teaches us. And then you'll earn some extra credit points for doing that. And then the very next link to the learning module is just a spot where you can complete that extra credit. And you would just click in the reply field, and then you can post your response. I only allow you to do the extra this type of extra credit one time in the course, um, but feel free to definitely participate with other students. And I've had many students that say, you know, even though you're not giving me extra credit for it, I still would like to summarize the blog for other students in the class and engage this class in discussion about the blog. So that's great. And then the very next link is a link to, at least in this case, is the actual PowerPoint. This is the PowerPoint that's provided from the publisher. So if you feel like you would like to uh, use this to kind of guide your reading within the textbook, uh, this would be a great way to do that. The next link is a link on our, is the page, our activities page in the course, where you'll find links to everything that you need to do to be successful. Um, at the very top of the page is a list of what you're expected to read, like for example this week you're asked to read chapter one, and then there's always a link to access the textbook website for practice resources. Here's links to how web pages work, that's just a suggested reading that you could read this week. Uh, can you teach yourself web design? That's a link to the extra credit reading. And then in the discussion area, these are the links to the discussion questions that I'm asking you to participate yourself participate in. The class introduction link is found uh, in the welcome module, but that's where you can introduce yourself to the class. Week one term project planning. Every week we're going to be basically talking about the progression of our term projects. This week the very first thing you need to do is you need to choose uh, which of your movie genres that you'd like to do for your term project and then after a few days I'll send everyone a note back letting everybody know what everybody signed up for. And as soon as you get that you can then be released to then start planning your term project here and then as you click on this link it's going to take you to the spot where you can compose that post and find the information that you need to do to do that post. And then here's the link to the extra credit uh, term project posting. So if you if you were to click one of these links it would open up in a new window which would give you a spot to create your post. But I'm just going to go ahead and click the next button and like I said the very first thing it's asking you to do is submit your term project choices. So you're going to click on submit assignment and this is where you can click on text entry or if you wanted to upload a file to me you could do that as well but click on text entry and you would tell me 
uh, the three sites that you would like to do the the three options that you would like to do for your extra for your term project. So maybe you wanted to do a site on uh, Christmas movies, and then maybe your next choice would be uh, Batman movies, and then maybe your third choice could be superhero movies. And then you would scroll to the bottom and you would click submit assignment. And then that's going to then go into my inbox where then I would know that you've submitted that assignment and I can then respond to that assignment and give you feedback. There's no actual grade for this assignment, um, but again, this is a great way for me to kind of know what choices everyone would like to do for the term project. So I want to try to have a community of people creating websites and not have two people do the same type of website. I'm going to click on next and then it's, uh, I'm going to click on next and it's going to say, term project planning and then here's the description for what you need to do for that first uh, term project planning post um, so here is just basically read this as if you're as if I was talking to you and I'm going to talk you through the steps you need to do to get the full credit for the post notice that there are five steps one two uh, three four five and then basically to get full credit for this assignment is 25 points and to successfully get 25 points in this assignment you need to um, it co accomplish these five steps. So the very first step, which you get five points for, is at the very top of the body you're posting in bold, you would get kind of give us a subject line for your uh, for your term project journal. The second one here gives asks you to find some examples of websites, and these exam examples of websites are very crucial for us because these are really going to set up exactly what our sites will kind of look like throughout the course because uh, as we're making websites in this course, you know, we have the tendency to kind of just, you know, think outside the box, which I think is really good, but we also have to learn by example. And so this week we're sharing examples of other similar author s I'm sorry, other similar movie genre fan websites that um, embody kind of like what we're looking at, like for the course. And here's just some examples of ones that I've seen here in the past. So you can kind of, if you want, you could choose maybe one of these. Don't choose them all because that wouldn't be fair to the others. But maybe you could choose one of these for your three. But then also find some other movie genre websites that you would like to use. You will notice that people may be choosing websites like Internet Movie Database, which is a great database of movies, but it's not a simple movie genre website or a simple movie about an actor, a website about an actor, or a simple website about one movie or something like that. That's really what we're looking for in this course, not a large database website or anything like that. Or sometimes you'll find people will share links to a site that has uh, maybe like a blog post about the movie that they like in a larger blog website because there's all lots of different types of websites and as a user goes to these different types of websites they expect that type of website. Our users and our websites are expecting to have just a simple movie genre website or movie website or maybe an, an actor website or something. Just a simple website, not a large... So, I mean, what I'm trying to get at is like imagine if you were to go to a website that's supposed to be selling pizza but then you go there and it looks like it's like a blog would you really think that this is a pizza website you probably think that something's wrong with it and you hit the back button and leave so your users know what they want so that's our goal as a web designer is to understand what that is and then design our websites effectively for them and then three create a bullet of list of principles that you see in those sites so maybe you would see oh on the batman film site you know they do this this and this and i would like to do that in my term project or in the nor of weak site that you use as an example maybe they do this really effectively in terms of functionality and design and you would like to implement that into your website and then at the finally you're going to ask the class a question to help you move forward with implementing one of these principles that you see or don't see uh, on the examples that you show and and then ha lead the class in a discussion about that and then five your goal is throughout the week uh, to actively participate in the discussions that other people pose within the class uh, as well. Um, our deadline for our initial posting is Wednesday and then you should spend the rest of that week to then participate with what everyone initially has posted in their discussion area. And then again at the very end of this post I said you know I know it's a little early to think about the term project but I, I'll, I've personally found in teaching this course and other courses that um, getting people to think about the term projects in the very beginning kind of grounds them in a larger project that they can then see it from beginning to end from the start of the course is really really helpful. 
I'm also going to gear all of our homework assignments, which we're going to, we only have three in the course, and they're going to start in week two, and those homework assignments are going to be geared toward developing pieces for your term project. Um, so I hope you find that really helpful as well, rather than just doing some external homework that has nothing to do with your term project, because this course really is largely all about developing this functional, uh, well-designed website as part of our, uh, which is part, which is the term project. And in the very end of all of our learning modules is the general questions link. And again, this is a great spot for you to ask questions. And then if you hit the next button, you will see the stop. Be sure that you know that this is the end of the module. If you click next, um, uh, that's week two. And as you guys notice, when you click next, we're going to get uh, a message that says you do not have permission to access week two because it's locked. Um, basically what this shows is that I have the whole course built and ready to go for you and I'm only going to be giving you week one during week one and then when we get to week two you'll have access to week two. You'll still be able to go back to week one but I'm trying to strategically set up the course to guide our learning from week one to week two to week three and so on. So if you click on something in the course and you, you'll see something that says oh, you don't have permission to access this because it has been locked I just wanted you to know why. I'm going to go ahead and click on the home link to jump us back to the home page and uh, be sure if you you know, if you have any questions, um, let me know. Great way to do that is remember the general questions area. And then when we get to week two, you're going to see week two populate down here at the bottom. Be sure that you check out the syllabus as well as the course overview. The syllabus is going to preview for you up here at the top. Um, takes a second to, to load, but anyways, if you scroll down, what I wanted to show you is these are the links to all of the assignments that you have in the course. Um, but as you can see, if you click on the assignments for week two, you don't have access to those yet. Um, but this just kind of gives you a broad breakdown of how everything is worth and how you're going to gain uh, extra credit, for example, um, things like that. Uh, click on your grades, you'll have quick access to your grades. Click on people, quick access to a list of all the people in the course. I would really encourage you to set up your profile. Whenever you set up your profile, you can click on your name up here at the top. But after you set up your profile, um, when you participate in the course, it's going to show your photo wherever you participate. And that's a great way to really kind of engage yourself with the other students in the class. Well, that's about all I have for you today uh, if you sat through this video. But I would encourage you to, you know, deliberately participate with everything in the course as best as you can. I have lots of extra resources that I'm going to be sharing with you each week. Um, so monitor your time and figure out exactly what you need to do for your own personal learning. By no means am I expecting everyone to do absolutely all of the extra stuff that I'm giving you in the course, but there is key things that I am grading you on. So be sure that you uh, fully understand all of that, which you will find in the description of the discussion or the description of the assignment. Those are the key things that I'm going to be grading you on. Um, again, that's about all I have for you, as I probably said that three times now. But have a good rest of your week, and let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.